And we are live. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are live. <laughs> Super. Well, yeah, we were just about to decide what we we're going to, how we we're going to initiate this conversation. Uh, but I guess we will improvise just like we know how to do as life coders. Um, so I was just going to propose we could, you know, each of us maybe tell our names. Um, yeah, whatever we want to say about our practice and maybe where we're joining from. Uh, it would be good to know also this sort of network environment that keeps on um that we keep on connecting to yeah you want to start <laughs> me <laughs> okay uh sure yeah yeah, yeah. uh some so, hey hi. <laughs> i didn't know i was gonna end up in an actual place um <laughs> I'm sorry to barge in no that's awesome that's great we're we're gonna have people joining just you know as as we go along that's perfect Welcome. We're just going to start a round of introductions. So you arrived at the perfect timing. <laughs> Super. Um, yeah, so my name is Joana Chicao. I'm calling from London. I am Portuguese and a lot of the life coding work that I do uh, lives um, in existing um, web environments. So oftentimes I take over, you know, famous search engines um, or uh, encyclopedias or all these environments that we encounter uh, pretty regularly or, or stream environments like the ones we've connected over today and I just started modifying the interface uh, by using some JavaScript code that I write um, inspired by choreographic um, scores. So yeah that's that's basically how I got into live coding was by these driven by um, choreography but also a curiosity around existing interfaces and how we could look at information in different ways or maybe unpack a little bit in a live setting how these inf in infrastructures are constructed. Um, yeah, and I joined the first ICLC when it happened in Canada and that's how I got to know a lot of the community. Uh, so yeah, and then from then I just started understanding how people would self-organize all the different channels etc and i also then started being more active at the time living in the netherlands and also starting meetups and starting workshops hosting events in um yeah in venues in the city and yeah like slowly also trying to understand how to balance presences and how to make it a more diverse environment so i've been doing that already for a few years now and today just felt like a beautiful moment to yeah be together with a lot of people who have been doing the same so I guess I'll pass on the mic now um yeah whoever wants to to follow Uh, well, I guess I can go. <laughs> so um, my name is uh, Mina, Mina Marie. Uh, I'm currently tuning in from very close to Lisbon in Portugal. And so I am half Portuguese. I'm uh, originally from Canada. And uh, my main life coding practice is music with Sonic Pi. So Sonic Pi was the first um, environment that I discovered when I discovered programming actually like about like five years ago. And uh, so it's kind of been my first love and, <laughs> and the one that I use the most. Uh, but I also uh, dabble a little bit with mini title with uh, in the supercontinent ensemble, which uh, Jessica is also part of, which I'm sure she'll talk about a little bit later. And um, and yeah, that's it. I think that uh, what what really drives me to Sonic Pi is the how expressive the language is. So normally in my sets, I really like to use like the fact that it's the, the language is very close to English. So for me, it's kind of like automatic writing slash poetry. It's like using the code to like express something beyond having a utility. Uh, and that's like something that really uh, fascinates me in the way I can use the code to complement uh, what it's actually doing, like the language itself. 
And so, so yeah, and that's pretty much that for me. <laughs> Next person. Oh, okay. Uh, hi. Uh, well, I'm Flor, Flor de Fuego. Um, at this moment, I'm in Germany, but I'm Argentinian. Um, do you want to introduce yourself? No. <laughs> okay. This is now Toyeda. Um, they is in Germany too, of course. <laughs> uh, we are doing um, a fellowship, like a art residency. And we mostly work with Hydra, but we, <laughs> I think we keep on hacking Hydra at some point. Um, we are working at the kind of a theater, so we are really trying to explore uh, like the scenic space and how we move and how visuals are combined with objects and with sound. Well, I code uh, with tidal cycles and a bit with super collider. Um, we do web pages. <laughs> um, I don't know what else, uh, but yeah, and we contribute. We are like Hydra collaborators. Um, we make tutorials. We try to help people uh, if uh, anyone has questions and also with Hydra meetups. Um, Hydra, uh, well, maybe uh, just to, uh, to say it like, it's a live coding visual environment created by Olivia Chuck. And I don't know if I should say something else. Well, today we were like coding uh, with Hydra uh, with Tida, but we were also like coding lights, like DMX, and mm. and yeah, and OBS, like the scenes, and <laughs> it was chaotic. Um, I think we like to try to break things. Just that I don't know who is uh, next. Uh, I can go. Hi, I'm Raya, or, um, and I'm coming in from what's colonially known as Guelph, Canada. Um, my, a lot of my live coding is, uh, like, all my experience was in India, and then I moved back to Canada, um, like, just before a pandemic hit. So um, I've been kind of, like, in a space and place where, I haven't really been live coding. So I saw this in my feed on Instagram and I think like, I'm just like following the live coding hashtag. And I was like, oh, let me see what, what's going on. So I was in the Mozilla hub section and what have you. Um, but if, if, and when I live code, it's generally uh, to uh, accompany singing and um, uh yeah, that was like a, a fun time in my life that now um, is bubbling up again where I, I think the future has some residencies and what have you in store that were from 2020. And now I'm like, oh my God, I've just been like in a basement for, <laughs> you know, a couple of years. Very pleasant basement, mind you. Uh, really thriving in the basement. Um, but but yeah, so I just saw this and I was like, what's going on? I don't even know how to pronounce live. I've been saying live code era. Like it's like live code era or something, but I would love to have more context for where I am right now. And I was not expecting to be um, in a like face to face kind of setting. Um, but yeah, I've been, uh, I, I feel like the last couple of years have been like thinking about things that could ultimately one day lead back to live code, but it's like everything from like weaving and printmaking to like dance and that is um things i i hope to incorporate into my practice um but yeah that's that's a bit about me raya hi raya uh, 
I'm actually very close from you. Uh, I'm in Hamilton, Canada, which is very, very, very close to, to Wealth, uh, maybe 30 minutes or so. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm originally from Mexico. I'm not really from Canada. Um, uh, not from Mexico City because everyone thinks light colors are from Mexico City uh, because most of them they are, <laughs> but not everything goes like runs around Mexico City. <laughs> um, so I'm from another part that is called Michoacan and my hometown is called Uruapan. Uh, probably the avocados that you eat come from Uruapan and also the marijuana that you smoke comes from there. Uh, it's pretty related. <laughs> uh, so, what else? I know, yeah, I, I need to present myself, right? <laughs> I'm just talking about avocados instead of, like, talking about light cooling. Um, like, when I was, like, very young, like, when I was still my undergrad, I was more interested in light cooling as a research, like, as a researcher. Um, for my master, I did like a, an ethnography about light colors in, well, it's more like a programming languages and in the arts in Mexico. Uh, and I did a lot of interviews, uh, but after that I was kind of like more uh, into exploring languages and it kind of like did click for me because I was already like doing some, some things with literature. And when I uh, started like getting involved into electronic literature, that's when I can like make like the click between uh, both practices because basically life coding is also a way to uh, explore the greeting but also the like the um, sound words um, and kind of like deconstruct the like points or that's basically what I what I wor work um, with life coding just with poems with um, just greeting words and yeah and with other things so that's basically my work uh like i'm, I'm here in canada doing like also a, a project related to live coding and also building my own language for visuals and i think it's really really important that obviously we have a lot of tools such as tidal cycles um hydra uh seis octavos uh estuary and flock and uh, super collider and a lot of tools but it's very interesting when you also create your own tools uh, Joanna for example has a very like interesting piece that is actually in my PhD uh, dissertation uh, <laughs> uh, that kind of like creates a, a platform in which um, you can uh, codify and, and I, I really think that as a way as a techno feminist approach uh, to live coding uh, it's always great to invite people to create the, your own tools or your own variations uh, of the tools. So I know that Flora, for example, uh, she does that with Adra, Hydra, so she doesn't just use the Adra functions, but also uh, the JavaScript um, possibilities of in Adra that you can also add. So uh, I don't know, like I, I'm, I'm always like talking about how cool it is to intervene programming languages like existing programming languages and platforms and um, yeah and that's pretty much everything that, now it's she Shelly Shelly is your turn I will just shut up and just uh, stop talking about avocado and marijuana and maybe just move to Shelly <laughs> and Shelly is like what hap what's happening <laughs> I, I'm so sorry. I totally messed up the time zone conversion and I just, I literally just walked through the door and I'm just like, oh no, it's on now. <laughs> so I don't know what you've been talking about. <laughs> we are just like um, making a small introduction. So if you want to uh, tell us who you are, Shelly, um, which tools do you use or whatever you want to say. Um, okay. Yeah. I'm Shelly Knotts. Um, I primarily live code with SuperGlider, um, so I like making lots of synth type noise. Um, but uh, yeah, I also perform with Jess and Mina and some other people in the Supercontinent Ensemble where we're using Tidal. Um, and, and yeah, I do other sort of practices around that. So um, I've been working in network music for a lot of years. Um, and uh doing some work with javascript and ai and whatever so anyway yeah i'm i guess i'm generally in the live coding slash hybrid <laughs> space um 
I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. So, I mean, now that we're all introduced, <laughs> uh, what, what did you all think about today? Like, how, how was everyone's experience about today? Like, either like the show or backstage or general impressions? Yeah, I was, I, I was actually pretty impressed how it all happened, because obviously it was very much self-organized. I mean, I think we should also mention that um, Alexana Cardenas, Tem Temple del Ruido, was um, obviously, you know, did a big push for all of this to happen. And so, I th yeah, I'm extremely grateful for her to initiate and also to endure because she's been there the whole day helping everyone to, you know, sort out technical issues and yeah. um, any questions. So obviously, I think a, lo a lot of it was very improvised and ad hoc, but it also uh, was, a f you know, the product of some people being more available and also made responsible for small small things uh, that were quite important in the whole event. And yeah, for me, I'm, I'm just, you know, it's just quite exciting to see how you can make this happen. Um, it, yeah, so it just feels good. And obviously, I think there was, we tried as much as possible to use, to be mindful of the tools we use. Um, and yeah, I think it's it's also something to discuss, like when when you try to self-organize something and you have certain beliefs around the technologies you use, um, you know, sometimes it's not easy to make it perfect because you're relying on oftentimes open source technologies and the effort of people who, you know, whose job is not just to organize these, but this is actually a very big effort on top of everything people do in their lives. So. Yeah, uh, just a big shout out to Alex and obviously everyone who was here today and also everyone who was not because the life coding community and the female life coders um, in this scene, they are just many, many of them and one day wouldn't be enough to host all of their performances. So that's also important to say. Yeah, for sure. I was also like so impressed. I'm always impressed how these events every time it seems like impossible. Like it seems like like the date is approaching and approaching and you're like, how how the hell is that going to come together? <laughs> but somehow you just have to trust the process and with everyone like pitching in and like, yeah, of course, Alexandra, I mean, she did incredible work. I don't think she slept like I, I think she was on like since like midnight last night. And I, I don't think she slept at all. Um, so, so yeah, it was, it was really amazing. And, and I, I just, I personally, I just love these events where we're like that whole live coding community together. Cause to me, there's, there's a really safe space and like beyond, you know, like the fact that it was women day and that, you know, we're all identifying as, as female performers. Um, but beyond that, I feel like just the live coding community in general is just so safe and welcoming. And it's it's really like a space for me, like I'm never stressed every time that I play, like I'm stressed beyond my mind for any other gig. But, <laughs> but if I'm playing for the live coding community, like I feel okay to improvise, I feel okay to not be so prepared and just let myself like explore and try things that I don't normally try um, because I feel that, you know, I'm gonna be welcome like with with all the messiness that can can come out of it you know and so um that's something i really really appreciate about this community yeah i think that's one of the um the most um beneficial things of events like this is just like a kind of coming together as a community and doing something together and especially like I don't know now it's like so much harder like to travel and come together physically I think these spaces are just like um so uh like grounding somehow to like um yeah just just 
I mean, still feel like there's a there's a community out there, <laughs> um, and yeah, yeah, even just doing some some nice performances in um, a nice space together, and I, and also just organizing it. Like I really enjoyed the the Telegram chat when we were <laughs> organizing the event together. It just was really nice just to, just to talk together about doing this thing. I think uh, people are saying that they miss uh, our names, some of our names. So maybe we can just say it out, out loud. I'm Jessica Rodriguez, just the name. Um, next. Mina Marie, Earth to Abigail. It seems that Naoto is like, what's happening? I'm just mm -hmm. in the background. And I think Raya, Raya is, uh, what's your and last I'm name? I'm Raya. <laughs> I'm broadcast to an audience. So hello. <laughs> I thought this was a private, lovely space. And I'm really glad I didn't display uh, potentially nefarious uh, items that were previously discussed by people in Hamilton, which we should note marijuana is completely legal in Canada. Uh <laughs> so I can talk about that. <laughs> um. Raya, it's so nice to meet you. I was uh, uh, listening to your music for a while. So it's nice to meet you and see you in person. Mm. Thank you. <clears throat> Maybe yeah, I, I do. Sorry, I do have a question about a question about like all of you. Um, like, I don't know if you want to talk um, like from your own like geographical context. Uh, how is being like a woman in the life coding community? Uh, like, we know that there are a lot of like men on uh, in technology in general. Uh, that is not like, I think it's changing. I think in the live coding community, it's like being like more even, uh, but I, I'm not sure like, Shelly knows everyone. So <laughs> Shelly, do you think there are more like um, guys that uh, women steal or do you think it's more even? Uh, and then if you, each one of you want to talk about, for example, Argentina or uh, Portugal, London. Mina, you are in Israel? Yeah, right. Um, Maybe Raya, you can talk about uh, Canada. Yeah, there's there's definitely so many more guys in in the live coding scene. I think sometimes it feels really even because um, I think the live coding scene is quite conscious about how they're programming in events, and I think we've uh, pushed for a long time to always have women on the bill. So it does like feel like compared to other parts of electronic music like it's more even but I think it's still not it's I think it's still massively and also like if you ever I like I'm a long time avoider of like online forums like I just hate them like I just can't like deal and like anytime I go in there like in any forum because I have like a question that I just can't solve on my own I always just like feel like there's this like wall of men <laughs> on like the on the forums and like that's where you kind of see like okay yeah even if they're not like um maybe like some like there's a lot of men who aren't like super visible in the live coding scene um but the like there's a, a mass of, the, <laughs> of them um but yeah i mean it's definitely a lot better uh, when i started um live coding i was like um in this like weird gap in uh <laughs> the live coding scene where um kate Sikio and uh nora lawway oh no it was pre I think it was before Nora was live coding but I think Kate Sikio had just left the UK and I ended up being like the only woman who was like in the UK like live coding for a while um and then 
um, Joanna Armitage started and Nora Lawway. And then I think like uh, we kind of um, between us, like kind of amassed like a, a scene of women life coders just through like really pushing like women only workshops and like teaching a lot of people and like pushing like the profile of like women in the scene. Um, and I think that's in the terms of the UK scene, I think that definitely helped a lot. And now it does feel like quite like if you at least on the gig scene you definitely feel like you're never going to be like the only <laughs> the only woman on a on a bill because there's so many of us but i think there's still a lot of work to do <laughs> as well yeah i can speak more so to uh, lived experience in India, though, I mean, I like am raised in Canada and that's the majority of the time of my life. Um, so there, there's multiple intersections of identity uh, within my, my experience there as a, a foreign person going to India, um, but also being ethnically Indian and born there. So like, uh, within an Indian context, or at least my experience in Goa and Mumbai, I would say there was huge amounts of tokenism. There was like, like, I'll be the person that's like a backup because I'll always have a set. I'm a live musician that's touring. And so like, they'll have like, they'll, they'll have a bucket list or like a list of people they want that say yes. And then that back out potentially, but also that it's just like, tokenism it is just like we need to make sure that there's there's one girl on this uh list and that like like the inner workings of it or like being a person that is seen as part of algorithm india has been kind of like uh, a bit too much for me um like whether it's uh just just like from a organizational expectation um or like yeah <laughs> i don't know i i don't know what's happened in the last two years but from my experience like i started feeling like an hr department for a lot of the other things and i'm not a person that's like equipped to be an hr department um and to deal with like the nuances of uh, like yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Definite overwhelm and like a step back from the scene to kind of just process and be like, oh yeah, like I'm dealing with all of these organizational things, but I might like also be dealing with, hey, I'm a small femme presenting person that then gets asked like, who taught you how to do this out of the, the guys on the lineup? And I'm like, no, actually like that's a mentee of mine. And like that pain, that like adds to like a feeling of already existing imposter syndrome. And like, yeah, I don't know. I think the end result has been for me as an individual to just be like, oh, this, this is a bubble in and of itself. There's also like lots of tech applications and like ideas and spaces that I can exist as myself without the <laughs> added organizational baggage. Um, but that's my, my own, just in one personal experience. No, I, I feel all of those things <laughs> as well. And I, I also agree with you that like uh, the tokenism thing is like such a tension because you're like, uh, you're always like torn between like, yeah, I want to be there to like represent and like to like show other women that like this is a thing that we can do and uh, to like, you know, like have a, a voice for women in this space, but also you don't want to be there only because like they they needed to put a woman on the bill and it's like yeah sometimes you end up having kind of tricky conversations with like promoters around you know what else are you doing are you just like asking me because you want a woman in this slot or are you actually like committed in some way to like gender diversity and, yeah it's 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 like a super super tricky 
tricky place. Yeah, I was gonna say that sometimes I also felt like I have to do it because I'm afraid if I don't, then, you know, it, it's gonna be more of the same. And also maybe one thing that I started to consciously do when organizing performances, I started doing workshops before the performances to share tools and to have more hands-on practical experiments going on. Um, because I thought that if, you know, it would be one way to transfer knowledge and yeah. And then also another strategy was to host, um, open, like an open stage, like jump session at the end. To be fair, I think that sometimes it can be trickier because there's a lot of people in the tech industry, you know, who very easily take the stage and that doesn't mean that you're opening up for more diversity oftentimes i felt like you know um yeah there were a lot of dudes <laughs> who were showing their stuff and you know it's fine i mean you know it's obviously it's it was open but i think you also have to find strategies within openness to counteract the norm um so yeah so it, it's it's difficult like of course there's nothing wrong for people to participate but if you're trying to really to make space for for diversity then you have to be a bit more cautious and, and sometimes opening up is not on your side it just re basically exposes you know what's the situation uh so yeah it's a, it's a work in progress to figure out that um sometimes you know it's just about making the open stage something where you sign up and I don't know also inviting people personally I um because of also teaching part-time I also started being more attentive when students wanted to engage and really like saying hey this is a really nice moment for you to just and also finding um opportunities that actually pay people so being able to pay students pay pay people who to participate who and break a bit the boundary around the fact that being on stage is only for those who are at a certain level in their careers and you know create um, a program that allows for different levels and you know and still be able to pay for, for people's time i think that's also quite important so to not make these labor free because then again you're just making it possible for those who are already in some way uh, privileged so yeah many different things uh, many different thoughts yeah, it's a, it's a huge topic, like, really, like, there's, there's so much to say. Um, I, I like to share, like, for me, my experience is kind of a little bit different, because so my my pronouns are they, them, I actually spend like a little bit more than a year now that I don't identify as she, her anymore, uh, because I, I, I identify as gender fluid. So I actually even had like a thought about the event, I was like, is it like, should I join? Because it's like women's day, but like, I don't, like I don't fully kind of feel that this, you know, speaks to me. So I had like kind of this inner journey of asking myself, like, what what does it mean to, to me? And then I, I realized with introspection that actually I consider myself gender fluid. So I do have that side of the spectrum too. It's just not all of the time. So I do, <laughs> I do identify as females sometime when I'm in, when I'm in that, you know, phase of my, of my cycle. Um, so, so it's kind of an interesting experience because for me, it's like, because it shifts, it's kind of like, I wish that it wasn't a thing. Like, I wish that, you know, I wasn't always kind of put on the spotlight because I present as femme, like whether, you know, I don't identify with it at that moment, or if I identify with non-binary, or if I even identify as masculine, uh, I still present as femme most of the time. So like people will kind of, you know, always automatically put me kind of in that box. <laughs> and so it's, it's, you know, for my experience, it's more like, I, I wish it didn't matter, you know, like, I wish like, like who cares, you know, like in a way, like whether whether I have boots or not. I mean, sorry, but I mean, 
you know, like it's not a, it's not about that. And the thing that frustrates me, I think the most is when, and, and it happened to me like a couple of months ago where I was participating in a showcase that was happening online and it was for, for this electronic music community. And, and of course it was like mostly, you know, male identifying people. And so I was kind of the only, uh, you know, girl there. And then the host of the event, like, was kind of saying, like, oh, look at, you know, look at what she's doing. She, look at what she's doing. And, and you know, it, it, she's a woman, you know, so great to see, like, women and the la, 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 la. And I'm like, you know, for me, it just makes me want to, like, just, uh, <laughs> like hide in a corner and like like why is that a thing like why can't it be like about just my music and what i do like it is for everybody else you know um so that's like my male frustration and raya i can imagine like i lived like three years in mumbai and <laughs> like i can just imagine i wasn't doing life coding at the time so i don't know uh, you know, most of the life commun coding community there, but I do know like what it's like to live in Mumbai and the, the atmosphere there. And like, I can just imagine. And when I was living in Israel, even though it's, it's really not like it is in India, but it's, there's still something like very male oriented for like the technology side of things. So I would give workshops and then, you know, literally sometimes I would have like at the end of the workshops, like a, a wall of like 50, 20 people, 20 guys trying to ask me questions. And, and it's like, for me, I don't feel it. But then people like coming from the inside, from the outside, see that. And it just has like a weird kind of perception. And then you see like the women that are the partners of, of usually these men that come in and they're kind of interested too, but they're afraid of asking questions. And you can just see that dynamic where like the male are just so much more confident and the women are like in the back and kind of shy to like get involved and, and you know, kind of ask questions and try things. And so it, it brings back also to Joanna, what you were saying, like education is like so much important because I think like, like you can live like the open stage open to anyone you can but there's still this thing where you know women don't have as much confidence to like put themselves forward a lot of the time and that's just a reality and that comes from the education and it comes from the, you know the and it's 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 an issue so like what do you do with that so it's like you want to make it equal for everybody but then you you have this confidence struggle and so you try to like be inclusive but then you're putting like the accent on something that shouldn't I mean it's like how do you resolve you know that that dilemma it's like it's it's, it's a thing so um well um I mostly live in Argentina uh, now I'm not but um I think like since I guess 2018, like I think like 2018, 2019 maybe, we met with uh, Iris. And, and also there were like some other life goders, like uh, girls, I feel like it's not something that it's uh, the, the click community, the like coding community in Argentina is not uh, so, um, so, so it, it's quite new. Uh, like uh, it's at some point, I'm not sure, but uh, the, the people that it's more active, it's, it's like working there and it, and it's quite, it's there there are like many girls many women uh, like like coding and i feel like uh with iris we kind of organize most of the events uh, talks so it's, it's it's strange because it's like uh yes there are there are guys of course but but i feel like it's quite equitative uh like there are, I'm, I'm not saying like uh, the IT, uh, like uh, 
because it's different for me because I'm also I don't identify as a developer. I'm uh, my background is uh, art uh, and I use code, but I'm not interested. I mean, of course, I feel it's interesting, but I'm not interested in the um, only the technique of uh, like coding. I feel it's important also to at some point like to think about uh, the concept of the message that we are doing we are uh, like trying to to express when we are using these tools uh, because it's not only about technology but maybe also i feel like it's interesting because i feel um this is like a breakthrough i can feel like i can work with the i read it hybridization of languages and for me that is like really cool because I uh, I study art but I also like music and I also wanted to combine that things and I discovered that with code it was like not only <laughs> just that but it, I could like combine uh, I don't know who was saying this uh, but uh, it's like a kind of a poetry also uh, when you program, and um, and I try to uh, express that also if I uh, teach because I'm a teacher and I and I've been doing like several workshops uh, since maybe 2020 mostly, and I have uh, a lot of I I teach also for a lot of. Uh, women and and I have like this feeling that when mostly we we work with it is it's like it's inspiring for 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 others like if this happens once uh, to us when we were in Colombia we went to a festival a full dome festival Don Mosheno it was the name and it was interesting because um, after we performed like two little girls came and asked uh, to take a picture with us <laughs> and i felt like it was like really inspiring because uh that's that's uh, what is good for me like uh inspiring not only uh our generation but but little girls it's like uh really really cool to this like um i remember i saw an article like many years ago like um, the role of musicians in, in video clips and they say like uh, the, the, it was a, a girl uh, who played bass and and she was like saying I I don't want to be like the girl who is like next to the boy uh, who is playing the bass or, or whatever instrument I want to be on the same plane and and not having that image was really frustrating by then and and I feel like the, the comparison is like, when you see that that exists and that is possible, then uh, you can encourage other people to, to do it. Oh, maybe just a <laughs> I feel like I said a lot. <laughs> That's okay. Thanks, Flora. Um, I don't know. Um, like uh, in Mexico, like, the light coding uh, is seen as started like um, like a very long time ago. Uh, I, I think that from the beginning it was not really like it was it wasn't even uh, obviously there were more guys than that women light colors, but I I knew that there were like several of them. I, I know Alexandra was in, in the first workshops and also performances. Um, also, I know about Chana, and there's another two women, but I, I, they, they are not really on the scene anymore. Uh, but I, that's kind of like the first generation of light cutters in, in Mexico. Uh, but in the second and third generation, I think there were like a more women like doing uh, light cutting, uh, like Maria Libertad, um, uh, Malitzin, uh, and there are a lot of like I'm so bad with names, uh, but here in Canada is it's different. Like uh, to be honest, I don't really know too much about like Canada beyond like certain circles, and it's also because Canada is is like 
as like other countries is really big and they are not really connected. Um, like I know that in Alberta and also in Vancouver, like there are people doing live cutting. Uh, in Montreal, there's also like people doing live cutting, uh, but I don't really know that much. I can just talk about my very like close context, which is McMaster University, uh, which is basically it's almost all guys uh, <laughs> and just like two or three women. And, and I don't think that it's that's kind of like bad per se. Uh, I do agree with what you say, uh, Mina, uh, that we have to go beyond the concept of woman and men and more into the concept of femininity, femininity or uh, but not really femininity in terms of like pink is feminine. Uh, it's more like the femininity, like I don't know, like a very abstract, I don't know how to like describe it, like actually, but I, I, I do like the term and I think that we need to start talking more about that beyond the uh, gender binaries, uh, because also guys can have the, like this uh, femininity um, uh, part in, in their own bodies and how, how they, re they react to things. Uh, but I, I do uh, also agree that in terms of education, like it's um, you have to take a lot into account the gender, even if you don't want to, because obviously male uh, or men they are raised in a different way, and it doesn't it doesn't matter if they live in Mexico or in Canada or in Europe. Or, um I don't want to talk about Asia because I I don't really too, don't know too much about uh, it's a like it's not really the West uh, anymore, so I don't want to talk about Asia. But I. But at least um, in the in the like the people that I know, uh, yeah, you see you see a difference, and and I don't know, like I I will make Alex McLean. He just like made a, a comment, and I would just put it on on the spot <laughs> because I think Alex McLean is a it's a very good example of how obviously Alex McLean is not like a macho uh, like a macho man or this concept of of an like we have the no I'm not saying I'm sorry I will complete my <laughs> don't laugh I will complete my <laughs> my idea like because because we have the idea of this macho man as 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 someone that is like super aggressive and that is always like that's speaking always like and i think i think that's toxic masculinity right it's like, yeah yeah, yeah. It's, it's like more like toxic masculinity <laughs> so <laughs> i'm sorry um yeah but yeah basically uh but that doesn't and, and that happens with a lot of people that i know like guys uh that they don't have this like stereotypical macho that we all have in our minds uh but that doesn't mean that they don't have some kind of like mascul toxic masculinity uh in their ways of being and that reflects a lot in in workshops and and when you're like working with someone else and you are learning uh besides like other people because as was mina was saying um sometimes we don't we are kind of like we don't want to ask if nobody else want like has questions so like i don't know I, i've been in like spaces in which i'm not understanding anything and then the, the facilitator the facilitator just asked something uh, I would talk about David Ogburn because I like that I work with him and he's like uh, do you have any questions and all the guys they're like no no super easy or like if David is like just explaining something that is pretty difficult because it's like Haskell and like obviously it's a, it's a difficult language like all the guys are like yeah yeah of course yeah so easy uh, i understand and then in my mind it's like i don't want to like i don't want to ask david to explain more because like everyone like i'm the only one that is not understanding and after like but the problem is that after that activity like asking to those same guys they're t like they're telling me no i didn't understand anything like, i didn't understand anything and i'm like so why why didn't you say something like <laughs> i feel like i'm the only person not understanding and and i think that's a like a uh and these guys that i work with they are not like uh they don't really have toxic mascul masculinities uh like they're pretty um conscious about like um a lot of like power dynamics but it's still sometimes they have these uh uh they do this because obviously that's how 
you are embedded in this culture, right? Or in your culture. So, um, so yeah, I think that, um, like, I think education is the key, as Joanna also was saying. And, but you also have to be, like, as a facilitator, facilitator you have to be very conscious about those dynamics. So uh, the women that are, uh, or even the guys that also don't, like, they feel the same way, the, the same way as women, they, they feel comfortable to ask and to just create safe spaces in which nobody is really like saying yeah i understand everything and i'm super powerful and and everything so i will because we're talking about education and before i forget there's a, a question about um like about education uh it says uh i'm running a live coding uh course this year in regional australia i'm very conscious of diversity within my students but my sign up uh, is uh, numbers are low anyway. Uh, any tips of what I can do to help encourage that diversity? Mm, partner with an organization that is already serving communities um, that may have networks. Uh, that is something that I think from my experience not doing that or maybe relying on um, a third party that didn't value diversity or whatever, like access. And um, I think someone has mentioned paying people uh, because time is also something that a lot of people can't uh, commit without um, certain kinds of give and take. Um, so yeah. I was also thinking that uh, it also depends how these courses are presented. Um, it might help maybe, you know, inviting lecturers from, and speaking of intersectionality from different backgrounds and genders, uh, etc. So, you know, I think a strategy could be precisely to already announce that in the program so that people feel like, oh, actually, I, I can you know, people see themselves in, in the people who already be hosting the workshop and then they feel more motivated to join instead of just one face that might not, you know, be welcoming for everyone. I mean, sorry, I not so literally, but, you know. Um, and yeah, so, so that is, if, if your course is within already a university where you have to sort of, you know, convince that group or, or welcome that group or find ways to make it welcoming. That's just one one way to go about it, like have invite people that can um, open up. And then obviously like it's your, you know, it, it takes time also to build up on these. It, it might take various years so that you get to where you would like to. And it's worth to persist, I think. I think also thinking about the language that you're using to communicate what it is that you're doing as well. I mean, if you're, I think if you use like super technical or even slightly technical or technically focused language, you're likely to group like attract one group of people. Whereas if you talk about it from a different angle, then um, uh, you might attract one a different demographic entirely. Um, and I think that's also where reaching out to organizations who work with different demographics or um, involving other people in your course <laughs> um, who might have a different background to you could be super helpful because they might just talk about things in a different way that might resonate with um, different people. Um, yeah, I can kind of speak from experience on that one um, that um uh i um once ran a live coding intro course or a course that involved live coding intro um where the blurb was written by people from a museum background and i almost exclusively had women on that course and it wasn't it wasn't a course that was like directed at women but it just uh, spoke in a different way about what it was that was being done which attracted a different set of people uh i feel it's important um also maybe to remark uh that no one 
words like knowing like uh and i and i try to express that when i i do mostly workshops because i before uh starting to use hydra i mostly didn't uh, code anything and and i try to when i try to do mostly workshops i i use that perspective like uh i was when i i teach to people uh the same way i like i would like <laughs> Uh, someone explains something that I don't know. And also maybe being conscious that people also has uh, background experiences and some knowledges that are not maybe from the field you are explaining, but that also could be combined with what you are teaching and, and maybe um, trying to uh, expand the potential of the people who is uh, uh, learning could be something positive uh, too. Like uh, that could be give maybe the the space um, to people to to share or to speak because maybe sometimes people is shy because they think they don't know but they know things besides uh, what you are teaching. So that's nice for me. Like letting people uh, be themselves. <laughs> Um, I, I'm, am I going to say something like a little bit controversial? Um, but it's, it's from my experience, from, from what I saw, um, I think that one of the issues also is like a lot of the time, it's like the learning process is different. Um, and, and there's, there's just something about the whole IT technology thing where, a lot of the times I think women are not confident enough to be in this environment of learning where the whole system of learning is is very kind of male oriented, but every system of learning is 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 male oriented. And, and I've realized that like a couple of years ago, I was teaching web development to a, a group of women and they were a group of 16 women, extremely religious women in Israel. So they basically had never really been in contact with men uh, because their religion didn't, didn't allow them to. Um, so they didn't know kind of what we know because we are used to like deal with all genders and diversity. And because the whole system that we're used to deal with is kind of very male oriented, we don't even realize how much we adapted a lot of the times. And so when I taught to this group of women and they, they didn't have this, this experience, it was very kind of in my face <laughs> how much there's a gap. And I realized within myself, like how much I was, uh, you know, kind of wired into this, like, you know, very efficiency, kind of like no emotions, kind of like tac, 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 kind of way of learning, kind of very rational, you know, way of approaching uh the, the curriculum and uh and it was a really big learning experience for me so i think that you know part of the problem is also addressing that so i do think that at the beginning it does help to have kind of gender separation kind of in a way just to allow like everyone that feels comfortable in their own identity to have the learning process that is the most appropriate for them. And then once that like initial gap, like once, you know, once people realize, okay, I can do this, it's not so much like of a thing anymore, like programming and this whole thing is not so inaccessible anymore that I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this. Once that jump is done, then you can like kind of bring everyone together because everyone has kind of like the same level of, of confidence in a way. Um, but I saw that like in the groups, like for IT programming things, it's like if you open up a group that is like for everybody, you'll have like very few women. But then if you open up like women groups for programming, then all of a sudden you have like lots of signups because it's like it creates that safe place where you're like, oh, maybe I can, you know, respect my process. It's just the process is different. Um, so, so 
yeah and the vibe is so different and like women are like because i i te- i've taught a lot of women only workshops but also a lot of mixed workshops as well and like it's just like such a lovely <laughs> like caring and supportive space when you like run like a women only workshop and like you know i like teaching mixed groups as well but it's just like a totally different atmosphere and you kind of feel like a bit more of like people like holding back or like being a bit more shy to ask questions whereas like if it's a women only space i think people are just like happy to be like yeah okay like let's let's talk about this or like i don't understand this like and like it just just yeah it 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 feels like just a totally different atmosphere it i mean it it, it, I mean, it does, it does. Like, i was i was doing like you know talking circles in my workshops when i was like doing with only women and because it was it was their need like they needed to 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 process you know emotionally uh which you know which is totally fine but like we're not necessarily used to that like right like when like we do we go to school we're not necessarily used to have that space that is kind of you know respecting the more you know feminine emotional flow which which a, a man you know a, a man can experience too we're not talking about you know biological gender here. we're talking about you know energies um but yeah, it's such a different, such a different vibe, and and but I surprised myself because I was annoyed by it because I wasn't used to it. Like I'm so used to be, you know. So it's like you know, like I mean, I was I was all day every day with these women. So we're talking about like eight hours of teaching, five days a week for six months. So you know, at some point, it's like your periods sink, you know, like you know. <laughs> like go haywire in the classroom it was like <laughs> and it's like you have to like you know deal with this and I and, and you know I was the one you know bitching about like oh you know like hormones <laughs> but you know but it's a beautiful experience like I definitely like learned a lot and it showed me a lot of like how different you know the actual process is and that's that's the point actually it's not about whether you're a man whether you're a woman whether you're it's about what's your experience in learning and practicing what fits you better you know I, yeah i also i don't know i also think like maybe it's also about about me as well <laughs> like when i teach like uh women only workshops like i feel more relaxed as well and so like i think that also like makes a different vibe because like sometimes when you're like teaching men and you've always got like that guy who's just like ah oh, can you tell me about this never architecture of super collider and i'm like no man i can't <laughs> like literally i cannot um but like you feel like in some ways you like oh i sometimes feel like with with like groups where you have like tricky men in it sometimes you're like in a position where you're having to like you know hold your ground and be like you know i'm i know my shit and i like know what i'm teaching you um whereas i ne- i never feel that in women on these spaces i just feel like hey we're doing something fun together and like i'm sharing this with you and like yeah yeah, yeah, this is my this first, is my first time, time in a like woman or femme dominated space regarding live coding. So this is very powerful for me. I will also add to Mina and say that I am non-binary and my pronouns are Z and they, and this is something that is is not a, is a revelation in the last two years since my time like within physical spaces of live coding where I was kind of constantly told like you're a woman and um at the same time almost fed like this like like when the praise is coming it's like you're like a girl boss or you've you've like cracked the code you're you're literally like whoa like that's so sexy look at her in front of she's like coding the thing and then she's wearing a crop top folks folks and so (laughs) but like i think there's something to be said about also like uh not being the only one or a part of the so like you just aren't being judged on your gender in those 
um, spaces where you've taken that away. And I've also felt like a similar feeling of like, oh, do I need a women's only workshop? And then I've been to one. Um, this was electronica generally. So a two day kind of thing sponsored by the British Council and partnered with like an organization in India that said, hey, we're going to do women in electronica. This is like a DJing workshop. This is Ableton. This is industry. This is networking. So they got like, and there was food, the most important thing. But like, seriously, having that space in the Indian context where not only is it like, like within live coding, I'd be an only femme character, but like in music, in music, in in any leadership position and basically anywhere you're going out at night like that you need a chaperone or something like what like and so and valid all like like those things are nuanced and you're like like there have been some sketchy things where i'm like i shouldn't have been alone on a scooter in the middle of goa but hey i'm a live touring musician this is what my my budget covers and then like something scary happens and so you're like kind of balancing all of those things and i find that coming to a space where whoa uh that didn't matter and for me also moving to india was a thing of like the canadian music industry and maybe live coding i don't know because those things are separate for me um it's very white uh, so like I have to deal with sometimes like the feelings in in Canadian uh, forums, at least in Guelph, um, of like you know like what's that you're eating or like that is that is that because of your your culture like <laughs> so it's it's very interesting and and like to to play a role of a token character and then be put in a space where no this is not part of your identity you're like. A being and you're okay to be curious you're okay to not you're okay to ask questions you're okay to like just exist thanks Raya. yeah i was going to say that yeah just like we are just people right uh and because it's also like when you are part of a, of a minority it doesn't matter if you are just not like a woman like any minority it seems that you have to be like hyper inclusive like super inclusive and if you made a mistake or you say something that you shouldn't, then it's kind of like a big deal. And everyone is kind of like complaining. And then the white guy like from Europe is not really because that because that person, because the, he doesn't really get involved in like inclusive, like being inclusive. He doesn't get criticized. But then if I as a woman made a, I don't know, forget the name of another woman just because I'm on a lapsus, then I'm just the worst person of, of them all. <laughs> uh, like, obviously, uh, we are also need to um, work in on our process of decolonization, uh, because we also grew up in the same environment as everyone else. And obviously, there are like uh, things that um, we need to de like de learn. I don't know how to say that in, in English. Uh, there's aprender in, in Spanish. So, so yeah, so we, we are just people. So we are normal people. We, we make mistakes and, and that that's okay. It's just like, uh, obviously, you always try to learn from, from like all, all, the, all the people. And yeah, and also I, 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 I want to say that kind of like get rid of this also stereotype, like the stereotype fe feminine of feminist, um, I don't know how to say that, like the stereotype uh, woman, because also like, I know, like, I don't know, I don't know you, Raya, this is the first time that I talk to you, you're, you're super nice. Um, but yeah, like, I, I know Shelly, I know uh, Joanna in person, I don't know Mina in person, but uh, I know Shelly and Joanna and my, myself, and I know like a lot of women like uh, Malitzina or Mariano Libertad, and we are not really the, again, the stereotypical woman. Uh, like, be, like again, just talking about the culture, 
it's because I yeah I was talking about the stereotypical macho, so I can I need to talk also about the the, <laughs> the other part. <laughs> uh, so and and that's okay, but that doesn't mean that we are not like embedded in or reproducing certain kind of um, uh, like occidental knowledge and colonial knowledge, um, and that we want. Obviously, we will. Uh, for that reason, we have to be very um, like. We have to know, uh, like, be conscious of our of ourselves. Uh, sorry, I think I'm I'm gonna just say the last question uh, from Alexandra because I think it's the last like, fifteen minutes. Um, so Alexandra is asking, uh, could could there be a female approach to computing? Uh, how could we implement them? That's a really deep question that I'm going to let everyone take a second to digest while I just say, Alexandra Cardin, I'm going to butcher your name as well, but oh my gosh, I follow you, like just clicked the follow on Facebook. And in March 2020, you shared something about anarchy that really helped me. <laughs> and, um, I just, uh, yeah, I'm a fan. <laughs> I'm also a fan. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I think um, I'm. I'm part of different feminist circles, and some of them techno feminist circles. Um, and maybe just a very small uh, thought around what that means. To me, so in a collective I'm part of in the Netherlands, um, where I used to live, we we have our own server, um, and we think of that space in feminist terms. So we think about the protocols we establish. We think about the ways we maintain that infrastructure. We think about um, how we want to share that with other sister servers or people in the community and. I think it's in the making and in creating these alliances and that's how I think feminism emerges. And I think it's for everyone. You know, we again like um Alex mentioned in the YouTube chat about intersectionality and again like I find it every time harder to name what it is that we are doing, but it's something different than the norm. It's something different than what seems to be oppressing a lot of our daily lives and it's about making space for other ways of being and that also since a lot of our lives now live in you know digital landscapes of sorts um, I think it's trying to own those spaces and not just let the capital rule I think that's maybe a more a very I know it's a very broad statement but I think um, yeah I think those small steps like you know, owing time, making time, however you you frame it, I think that's um, one way to go about it. And yeah, time, time and space, and there's not such a thing even. So like, I don't know, defining the way you move around with others, perhaps. Um, yeah, so that was just a very quick and concrete uh, example that I carry. Anyone else? You are so quiet. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I think um, I need to ask, like read the question again. A female approach to computing. <laughs> um, I don't know. I think that the female approach goes uh, like it's very linked to the coloniality for me. Um, because again, if we kind of like open the concept of um, of the fem female, uh, what do you say? What did you say, Raya? I really like, like it was female foc no, fem fem focus, no, fem yeah. fem focus, fem mm -hmm. focus, uh, fem focus computing. I think it it goes uh, really linked to the coloniality and just uh, by creating your own tools that they don't really have to go to like be designed for everyone in the world. Uh, I think that's a, a pro like that's how you make a different 
way of computing um, by involving with other people and just the, obviously you have to design uh, but also get like gathered with people and just work together like collaboratively i think that's um it doesn't matter if you're a guy or if you're a, a woman or if you are a day or or like any gender that you want that you want to be like you want to work with others and by working with others you have others or different perspectives and i think that i i don't know i, I want to mention for example i like say say octavos that is not is designed by by luis and I want to make a full disclosure because Luis is my boyfriend. So it's not because he's my boyfriend. I'm not talking about him because I love him. I'm just talking about him because I, I kind of like was, I saw how he designed Sales Octavos. And even though he created like, uh, like the language itself, he's the one that programmed everything. Uh, like the research behind that was very like into talking to people into just like um just talking about the uh, like the colonial processes in latin america and we made like uh, cir uh circulos de conversación conversation circles uh with like different like people from different like that that lives in different parts of latin america and we were talking about software about computing about um uh, also diaspora and immigration and, and, a, and a lot of like those subjects and I think that's uh I'm not saying that Seis Octavos is the uh, the best example for like a theme a femme sorry like a, like a femme like driven computing but I think because I, but because I don't think there is an answer if, if if it was just like one answer then it will be like a male computing <laughs> uh or so i think like someone told me that there's no really when we say feminists uh, uh we, we should say it always in plural because it's not just one way of being feminist feminist uh, yeah it's different ways uh and that's kind of like the the cool part of, about it um and how you kind of like work or imagine different structures and then yeah and I was don't say anything. Sorry, I talk too much because I, I yeah, it gives me a lot of anxiety <laughs> to talk to people in general. <laughs> so it's, it's because resonating. of COVID. It's because of COVID and this pandemic and being inside without talking. I just talk to my dog and Luis. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So do you want so, to say something? <laughs> Uh, I know that, I know the feeling of just talking to the dog and your boyfriend <laughs> for two years. <laughs> and then it's just like, how do you have a normal conversation anymore? I just don't know. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I don't, uh, it's just, it's such a huge question. Um, this, um, it's really hard to um, uh, find uh, I, I guess I guess I just agree with uh, Jess and Joanna that there's like um, it's a it, there's lots of answers <laughs> and that in itself it, I guess is kind of like the the female approach and um, I guess I would also come down on the side of this sort of like cultural um, cultural perspective of uh, not thinking so much about um, the language and the technology because um, that's a huge framework that's been um, built for a long time by a lot of men <laughs> um, and uh, it's quite hard to um, uh, deconstruct that in a way that's um, useful but um, that we can at least position um, that different culturally um and i guess uh, yeah i guess the kind of the collectivism approach so like you know events like this which is just about coming and gathering together and thinking about and talking about and doing computing together um is is like super yeah super helpful and, and great and then i'm just rambling now i'm so tired <laughs> <laughs> I was also I, I was also um thinking about like I've been thinking about riot girl music for like ages like yes <laughs> um because like I um I guess I I really like this kind of feminist 
like tradition of like you know resistance against uh, the the male dominance in um, scenes and um, and the sort of relation between like live coding and punk music and just sort of like hacking and doing and uh, making and uh, sort of embracing like the the mess um, and so yeah I've been I've been thinking about Riot Girl a lot and sort of um, how there's something like explicitly feminist in just like you know taking the like seizing the means of production and just like doing stuff um and uh yeah i guess yeah i've been thinking about punk coding for a, for a while um yeah <laughs> and, and I, I i don't know i'm still kind of thinking about like what what um uh what riot what algorithmic riot girl music would and should look like <laughs> Lovely. I feel like I didn't have an answer for this um, until like kind of absorbing and resonating with with your responses. I've just felt like even like this is a complete accident. I literally clicked the a, like a link and like I was testing out other links like no one knew that I was supposed to like going to be here, including me. And I didn't know this was being streamed. So if this is not the most punk thing ever, and then I just start saying like my truths and then I'm like, wait, real people outside of this can see us. This is being streamed to a worldwide audience where <laughs> I will be held <laughs> for my crimes in a court of law. Okay. So yeah, like I, this this feels this feels feminist. I'm here. I made it. <laughs> yeah, I mean I don't I don't really have anything else to add to like to like everyone's answer, I think is like amazing. And it's like it's a really deep question. But I think like the first thing that just popped into my mind is like like this is also the nature of programming. Like there's as, there's as many ways to program as there are programmers. So I feel like one of the most, you know, feminine or feminist thing that you can do is daring to be yourself and actually daring to, you know, find your own way to, to solve problems, find your own way of building your tools, find your own way of expressing yourself through code and, you know, not being like under the influence of what, like you think is expected of you or what you think like everyone else is doing or how everyone else is doing. It's like, you know, do your own thing, you know, like express your femininity or non-femininity or anything in between in however, you know, way you want and dare to live it. And, you know, that for me is, you know, Okay, Flor and Joanna, do you want to say something? Uh, You're muted. Jess. Just ah, I'm sorry, I wasn't okay. muted on the stream. Uh. <laughs> they were hearing me. Uh, Flor and Joanna, do you want to say something? The last thing uh, before finishing the streaming. Uh, I don't know. I'm I'm super tired. No, Toy is saying that I should say something, but I don't know what. No, but... you, should, you should say something amazing. No, well, I, something amazing is, uh, no, I was uh, just thinking about something Olivia said in one uh, talk she, she did about Hydra, and, and she was like saying, and that's why I think Hydra is super cool, like, uh, it's really uh, a friendly environment, and, and you can code, and, and you are coding, it's like you, you don't need to be like a, a super uh, developer to to do something and and that's the thing uh i think it's interesting related to what you all are saying like there's uh, not a single way uh of of doing things like you can build your own way or just try that i don't know <laughs> I just want to thank everyone for today. It was very inspiring, and you know, it gives it gives you courage. At least, it gives me courage to carry on 
um, sometimes it's not easy to juggle, you know, all your energy <laughs> into different things. And days like these, I think, make it uh, feel worth it. And yeah, and again, like beyond gender and towards all the diversity that we have, which is what I think we should focus on, like everything we carry as beings, um, just like I think we've discussed, that's, that's, where, that's what we have to bring. And it's, yeah, it's amazing. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Everyone. I'm just going to end this stream and and thanks now to like uh, you didn't move. You were just <laughs> <laughs> Do you want me to speak the truth? Yeah. <laughs> no. And only the <laughs> truth. <laughs> now in the last two minutes we're gonna reveal the whole truth. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, thanks everyone on the streaming for watching. I'm just gonna stop the streaming and I'm not sure there's another like performance right now, two performances. So I'm not sure how yeah. oh, that's wow. going to happen. <laughs> um, but yeah, just stay, stay on the streaming. I feel like, yeah, I'm on a TV show. Like the Brady, <laughs> what was it? Yeah, the Brady family or something that they were just like popping. On. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. So, bye everyone on the streaming. Like, bye. <laughs>